mouth you are able to speak oh lord so speak to us oh lord utter the truth father let it transform and change us oh lord the bible says we shall know the truth we shall experiment experience the truth and we shall be set free speak to us through this word oh lord set us free oh lord Give us deliverance, but also freedom through this word. Father, use as a simple instrument. Communicate your will to these people, to this congregation. Change somebody's life. Change somebody's way of seeing, of doing things. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we say, Amen. Can somebody give Jesus a round of applause? bless you. Praise the living Jesus. Amen. Amen. Beloved, it is important for you to not only be delivered, but also for you to receive freedom. Because those are two different things. So my prayer this morning is not only for you to be delivered, but also for you to receive freedom. Because there are people who are delivered, but they are not free. They are delivered from the devil. The devil has nothing to do, nothing to, you know, to hold them. But because of their ignorance, they are still under the spell or the manifestation of demons. So you need to be delivered. And deliverance, we receive it when we receive Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior. But also we need to receive freedom. Hallelujah. You know, it's so, it's so important. And freedom comes from the hearing of the word. Freedom comes from the knowledge of the truth. The Bible says, Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall give you freedom. You see, people are delivered by prayer, but you need to hear the word of God so for you to have freedom, for you to have freedom. Freedom comes from the experimental knowledge. Experimental knowledge gives you freedom. Okay. Here is the thing. So, like if you used to walk by feet to go to work and I bless you with a car, I delivered you. Because now you're not going to walk by feet anymore. You have a car that can help you to reach that place. But you don't know how to drive. So you've been delivered, but you don't have freedom. You still slave. So I pray this the word of this morning to give you freedom. To give you understanding of things. We have been set free, but we need now freedom. Freedom. Praise God. Amen. Do you mind greeting the brother and the sister next to you and just wish that brother the welcome or that sister the very welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Praise the living God. Brothers and sisters. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. I want to remind you that we are all brothers and sisters. I remember somebody somewhere was very upset with my wife because as he was inviting that person to our wedding, he said, Mr. Mr. So-and-so. I -so. was so upset he did not attend my marriage. And then he came to tell me, Pastor did not come to your marriage. Because your wife was so disrespectful. You did not write pastor. You wrote mister. Brothers and sisters, we are all brothers and sisters. Amen. I may be your pastor, I'm still your brother. Amen. Amen. Praise the living God. Okay, let's go to the business of today. I promise you that we are going to be speaking about the how to fast for results. How to fast for result. It is possible to fast and not get result. But my aim this morning, not only this morning, this couple of weeks until we reach our fasting period is to explain to you, is to help you understand what or how can you do for your fasting to start to become, um, 
to become productive, to produce results. Because there are people who are fasting, but yet they don't have results. There are people who are angry, are fasted for so many days, for so many weeks, but yet God did not do anything. Let me tell you that fasting it is one of the secret weapon of Christian. If you look in the Bible, you will see that people have used fasting as a weapon of being in a very desperate situation. When they've been in a very complicated situation where they couldn't find a way, where they couldn't do anything, then they went into fasting. So fasting, it is something that you should not take it from, from granted. Fasting, the devil don't, doesn't like us to fast. Or if he allow us to fast, he will make sure, but this, uh, he will make sure that we fast wrongly for us to not get the result. That's why we need to learn because we will, from the 28th of this month, we'll be going for a long fasting of 14 days. So I want you to understand how you should fast for you to not fast for nothing. Because it is possible for you to fast, but only to get the results in the body, only to slim. It is good, but I don't think that you want to fast for slimming. You are fasting for something else. Hallelujah. So in the Bible, we saw people who fasted for different reasons, but very terrible situation. I recorded for you the story of uh, Moshe. Actually, the word fasting or fast, it is repeated in the Bible 70 times. 70 times. That the Bible all along from Genesis to Revelation, it speaks about fasting. And the first time fasting came into picture in the Bible is in the book of Exodus chapter 34. When Moses, Moshe, went to the mountain and spent 40 days and 40 nights with God. But if you read it properly, he did not only fast for 40 days and 40 nights. He fasted for 80 days and 80 nights. Because after he came back, after the first set of 40, he found out that people messed up. So he went back the same day the very same evening, and spend again another 40 days or 40 nights. So you see, fasting it is something that the Bible speaks about. So if the Bible have to speak about 70 times, I don't think that is for granted. Hallelujah. So Moses, our father, in uh, Exodus chapter 34, verse 28, the Bible said that Moses, he went to the mountain, and he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, the first set. So Moses fasted. For sure Moses fasted for a reason. He was seeking the revelation of God. He wanted to know that God. That's why he said, show me your glory. He wanted the God that he heard about, the God that he saw from far. He wanted God to reveal himself to him. And the second person that we, we saw in the Bible is not chronologic. I'm just recording them. I'm just um, putting them aside for you. It is Queen Esther. Now Moses was a leader. Here is a queen. A queen. Queen Esther. In the book of Esther chapter 4. Verse 16. The Bible says that they were in a certain city of Susa. And in that Susa there was a certain man called Ammon. Who plotted against all the Jewish to kill them. To exterminate them. Actually the hand of the king was already put on the paper for all the people of Israel to be exterminated. It was set. It was done. It was finished. It was written. But the Bible says that his uncle, her uncle, Madokai, came to her, sent message that we are about to die. They are about to kill all of us, you included, because you are Jewish. And the Bible says that Queen Esther decided to fast. She decided to fast. Because she wanted to go and appear in front of the king to change the situation. She wanted to change the situation. The Bible says that go gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my, my maid will fast as you do. She was a queen, huh? remember. She fasted as 
as, as a queen as she was. She fasted for three days. And the Bible says, if you read the story, they overcame that plot of a man. A man was killed at the place of the people of Israel. So you see, a queen fasted. If you go further, there is a kingdom, a country of Nineveh in the book of Jonah chapter 3, verse 5 to 9. Jonah chapter 3, 5 to 9. The Bible is recording the story of the prophet Jonah who was sent to Nineveh by God to tell them that uh, all the city, because of the evil effort of the city, the city shall be killed, shall be destroyed. And the Bible says the king of the city, the king, heard about it and he sent a decree that for three days the entire city, the entire country of Nineveh shall fast to remove the curse of God upon them. And indeed, they fasted. Guess what happened? The hand of God, which was heavy upon them, which was about to destroy the entire city of uh, Nineveh, the hand of God was removed. So they were saved because of fasting. They were desperate. They prayed. They cried unto God. They fasted and God intervened. The fourth History that I did catch for you is Daniel. Daniel in Daniel chapter 9, verse 2 to 3. The Bible says that Daniel also, he learned that 70 weeks or years was actually set for his country, for his people who are in slavery in, a, in, in, in Babylon to be set free. But just he realized that, he realized that they were still slaves there. So he prayed he fasted for 21 days. Okay. Let me just make it. Let's not go to that theological polemic about the fast of Daniel. But anyway, he fasted. He fasted for 21 days. And on the 21st day, the Bible says, the answer came. And Daniel was delivered. The people of Israel were delivered. In the New Testament, Paul and the church of Antioch, if you read the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 13, verse 1 to 3, the Bible says they were fasting and they were praying. And the Spirit of the Lord came and said, put aside for me Paul and Silas. They were fasting and praying. Hallelujah. Jesus was once asked a question by Pharisees. They said that people with you, your disciple, they never fast. But the disciple of John, they are fasting. And even the, the Pharisee, they are fasting two times a week. How come you, you are not fasting? Jesus answered them. Because they are still with the groom. When the groom will be removed, they will fast. Hallelujah. We'll sit a bit later. So you see in the Bible, people fasted. In the Old Testament and in the New Testament. From the simple people to the king. Passing by the queens. So people fasted. People of any social rank. Fasting is not only for poor people. It's not only for people who are suffering. People who are lacking. Fasting is for every level of the society. And fasting can help anyone. Provided that it is done in the manner that God wanted to be done. Amen. And my intention is uh, through the Bible... To learn how fasting should be done. Now people can ask. Is fasting still something of news of today? Should you also fast today? We are in the grace. The grace of God is there. The spirit of God lives in us. God is here. Why will you fast? Jesus suffered for us. Somebody has used, has said to me. Jesus suffered for me. I don't have to suffer anymore. I just have to enjoy. It's true. But uh, it is just taking the, true, the truth in a, a very bad angle. Jesus suffered for us, for us to have victory through suffering. Are you getting me? He did not suffer for us for not to suffer anymore. He suffered for us so that when we go through suffering, we know that through this suffering, I already have victory. No matter what can happen to me, at the end, victory will be mine. He did not suffer for you to not suffer anymore. 
but he suffered for you. If you go through the suffering, you must know that at the end, victory is going to be yours. Amen. <laughs> the, the, the sooner you understand it, the better it's going to be for you. Otherwise, you are going to curse God for nothing. So in the book of Luke, chapter 5, verse 33 to 34, I would like us to read it. Luke chapter 5, verse 33 to 34. Is this fasting something which is of news or it is something which is of news? Hmm. The Bible says, they said to him, John disciples, often fast and pray. And so do the disciples of the Pharisees. But yours go on eating and drinking that don't fast. Now this is the New Testament that the question is asked to Jesus. So it is in this period of you and me that this question is asked to Jesus. Why your people they don't fast? Now here is the answer of Jesus. Jesus answered them. Can you make the guests of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? Now, verse 34. But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them. In those days, they will fast. Are you getting me? Now, the Lord Jesus did not say that you and me we should not fast because he fasted for us 40 days and 40 nights. Because Jesus also fasted himself. To give us an example, the Bible says he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Now, Jesus said that his disciples by that time, they couldn't fast because he was there. They didn't need to do anything. Jesus was doing everything for them. But the day he was raptured in heaven, he said, from that day, you better fast. Hallelujah. So fasting, it is not something which is past. It is something of today. It is something that still needs to be done. Fasting, it is not over. Fasting, it is still on. Hallelujah. And fasting, it is not only on for the poor. Fasting is on for all the level of the society. We saw king fasted, king of Nineveh. We saw queen fasted, queen Esther. We saw down people fasted. So of every layer of the society, fasting, it is still of request. Hallelujah. And in Matthew chapter 6, verse 16 to 18, Jesus himself, he is now speaking clearly about fasting. He's even giving us what to do when you are fasting. He wouldn't be speaking about it if it is something that he didn't want to be done. He spoke about it because he wanted it to be done. And he wanted it to be done properly. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 16, the Bible says, When you fast, now, he is teaching his disciples. He is telling them, because I will be gone. That time, when that time will come that you have to fast, this is the time for us to fast. Can you please tell your neighbor, this is the time for us to fast. This is your time of fasting, my brother. This is your time. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do. For they disfigure their face to show men they have fasting. They are fasting. I tell you the truth. They have received their reward. This is Jesus speaking. Give us the next scripture. He said, but when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face and on and on. We'll come back to that. You see, Jesus himself is doing what? He's speaking about fasting. And himself, Jesus, he fasted. The Bible said the spirit of the Lord took Jesus in the wilderness so that he may fast and be taunted. Clearly. And the disciples of Jesus Christ, after the departure of Jesus Christ, they fasted. Come with me in the book of Acts. Verse 13, 1 to 3. In Acts chapter 13, Jesus was raptured already. But his spirit was still on earth. But Jesus was raptured. The, his spirit was on earth, but he was raptured. The Bible says that these disciples in the church at Antioch, 
There were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, called Niger, Lucius, and Siren, and all, 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 go down. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting. They said these people were doing what? They were worshiping the Lord and fasting. Holy Spirit say, set apart for me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work which I have called them. What were they doing? Fasting. Now the question you should ask yourself, since this year have started, how many times have you fasted? If the Lord Jesus fasted, if Paul, Silas, Barnabas, and all those prophets fasted, who do you think that you are to not fast? We always bring a lot of reasons for us to not fast. You know, I'm seeing people, he's not fasting, but because the day is so difficult, he did not get opportunity to eat until 6 o'clock. Not even to drink water. You ask him, have you eaten? Oh, you know, I haven't eaten. I was so busy. Hey, now it's 6. He managed to not eat until 6 o'clock. But the very same person the following day said, let's fast. You'll see now the reason. I'm suffering from stomach. You know, I will go to work. I'll, you know, all those reasons, if you look very well, sometimes we remain without food and doing our day exactly the way we used to do it. So somewhere, somehow, when you fast, when you make it a fast, it becomes different from just a hunger strike. And because it is fast, it is linked to God. It has other implication in your spiritual life and in your physical life. That is the reason why the devil doesn't want it. Amen. He will allow you to do hunger strike. I'm seeing ladies here who are going around without eating. I've seen people living on fruit because they just want to lose weight. It is possible. But make it now a fast. It becomes very difficult. You know why? Because the devil knows when you are fasting, it has another implication. It has another implication in your own body, in your own life, and even in your future. It has another implication. That's why he has to fast it. So we need to understand it. What is now fasting? What is fasting? Fasting is to abstain from all or some kind of food or drink while praying. I prefer to give this full definition because it is important for you to make a difference between hunger strike that politicians are doing for them to be heard with fasting that we are doing to humble ourselves for our voice to be heard in heaven. Are you getting me? Fasting is to abstain from all or some food. So you cannot say you are fasting and there is no abstinence. Every fasting must always, have, must always have something that you depart from. Something that you refrain from. Something that you refuse. You can't fast. You are fasting but you are doing exactly everything that you do in the normal days. Which kind of fasting is that? Because by definition, fasting is to abstain from all or some kind of food or drink while you are praying. So you cannot fast without praying. You cannot deprive yourself from food and drink without praying. Fasting it is you abstain from drink while you are praying. So you cannot say because there are people, he is just not praying, he is Fasting but doesn't pray, sit at the corner, he just wait until the afternoon and then come back to church. Those are the kind of people everybody will know that is, is fasting. Remember at the beginning of my faith, I used to fast like that. When I'm fasting, everybody must know that I'm fasting. You touch me, no, don't touch me, I'm fasting. <laughs> you fight me, say you're fighting me, wait. When I finish the fasting, I'll come back to you. I even promised people <laughs> to pay back. I remember I used to ask them, Look, today I'm fasting, please keep my breakfast. Keep my lunch. 
I'll put them together at the end of my fasting. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is important for us to understand what is fasting. Because when we understand what is fasting, we will do it in a proper way so that we may receive result. Remember, we are saying we are fasting for result. Hallelujah. So, we are not, I'm not encouraging you to do hunger strike. Or hunger for, we, for losing weight. You can do that, it's fine. But here, this morning, I am not here to, uh, to show you how you can lose weight. No. I'm here to show you how you can fast according to the Bible for result to come your way. Hallelujah. Fasting is a time of uh, humbling yourself before the Lord without eating or drinking, praying for the face of the Lord to be revealed to you. So when you are fasting, the first thing you are looking is God's face. I know people only fast when they are in trouble. People only fast when they want something from God. But God shall be the first reason why you are fasting. You are fasting first to see God. Because the first fast was not done for things of the world. The first fast by our father Moshe was done for God to reveal himself to Moshe. Are you getting me? In Exodus 34, the first fast was not done. Moshe did not go to the mountain. Do not spend 40 days and 40 nights to ask God, give me money, give me marriage, give me babies, give me this, give me that. It's not bad. But the first reason Moshe went to the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights, he wanted God to reveal his will to them. Because if you do not know God, even if you get the benefits of God, you lose it. Let me say it again. If you do not know God, how he operates, how are his principles, even if you get the benefit of God, you will lose those benefits. So you better know God so that when you get his benefit, you will be able to keep the benefit of God. Moshe was different from the people of Israel in this. The people of Israel, they knew, they had of God. They saw the mighty hand of God. They knew the mighty hand of God. But Moshe knew how to bring the manifestation of the hand of God. But now they didn't know how they can bring that manifestation. They only knew that the God they are having is capable of doing this and that. That is the reason why when they were thirsty or hungry in the wilderness, they couldn't bring God in action. They went to Moshe and they started complaining to Moshe. Moshe, you took us here. Where's that God? We saw that hand. He, he, he struck all the firstborn of Egypt. Yes, we saw that. But now there's no food. Now there is no water. Because they knew the hand of God. But they didn't know how to make that hand to work. Moshe knew the principles of God. The people of Israel saw the hand of God. So when you are fasting, you are not only seeking the hand. You must seek also the face. So because if you know the face, every time the hand will not going to be there, you can inquire the face that brings the hand. Hmm. Am I making sense to somebody here? So if you know the face of God, if you know the principles of God, you will know what to do so that you can bring the hand of God, the manifestation of God. They went to Moshe. They started crying, Moshe, there's no water. There's no water. Moshe knew what to do. He went and he spoke. He went and he hit the rock. He went and he called God. And they saw manna. So many Christians today, they are seeking the hand of God. But they are not seeking the face of God. So when you are seeking the, the hand of God, you might lose the benefit of the hand of God because you do not know how to keep the benefit of God. How many people are divorcing? That day they invited us. We went there. We had a big party. We celebrated the Lord. We thank God. We give our gift. 
that is blessed with a marriage, two years down the line, they are divorcing. I don't know why they don't also invite us to go and assist on that divorce. I'm sure because they know it's not something pleasant. Hallelujah. We saw people losing what God gave them. God bless you with money. Bless you with a job. But because you don't know the principle of God, you lose. You lose that job. You lose what God gave you. So when you are praying and fasting, you must seek the face. That's why I say fasting is a time of humbling before God, without food, drinking, in prayer, so that you may seek the manifestation of the face of God. Hallelujah. You see, the good thing with God, when he comes, he knows the need of his people. God cannot come and do not attend to your need. Even if the first reason he came it, is, it was for his own things. Hear the things. One day, Yeshua, he wanted, he was crowned by a crowd. Many people were, were, were surrounding him. So he wanted to preach all of them. And then he went close to the seashore. He went to the seashore and he found a boat that belonged to a certain Simon, Peter. He asked him, he said, can I use your boat for me to attend to these people? Now, let me maybe put you into context. Peter, in that morning, he worked the entire night. Not only that, he worked the entire night and did not catch any fish. Imagine how this guy could have been first tired and also discouraged. The only thing he was thinking to pack his net, put them there, go and sleep. Now here's a gentleman who comes and asks him, can I borrow your boat? Of course, Jesus was not, he didn't know how to, to manipulate the boat. So he was telling him, go back in the boat, take me back in the seashore and let me do my job. So the guy was tired. And Peter obeyed. He went into the boat. He pushed it in the, in the middle and Jesus preached. Because the reason was why. Jesus wanted to, to have echo. You know when you are, you are on the sea and you are preaching, your voice can go far. Remember, Jesus was always surrounded by not less than 5,000 people. It is not easy for him to talk and 5,000 people listen to him. So he needed to be in a certain condition. He was not having a microphone like us. So he wanted Having a condition so that the voice can. So you see, Jesus came to Peter for his own need. And Peter, who worked for the entire night, he said, ah, this young man. Anyway, let go. He gave him the boat. They went and he's giving him even orders. Push a, a bit in the middle. He pushed the boat in the middle. He said, Jesus preached, 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 healed, delivered, cast demons. In all those things, Peter was not having nothing to do. Because his problem was his food. But there was no food by that time. Jesus was busy with his things. This is what is happening. Sometimes Jesus will use, will use you where you have no interest. Where you are asking yourself, but here I have no interest. I have not gained anything. Since I started working in this church, I'm not gaining anything. Everything they are insulting me, everything they are doing this. Since I started cleaning the church, since I started giving, I haven't seen anything. Wait. Wait, because he will never he will never leave your boat without attending your issue. He will never leave your boat without attending your issue. The Bible says, when he finish, wait until Jesus finished to use you. He hasn't finished to use you. That's why he hasn't attended your issue yet. He is still busy with what is on issue. The Bible says that uh, when he finish. Now he turned to Peter. He told him, Peter, can you go a bit on the deeper sea? Peter said, this young man. Okay, I will obey. He went to the deeper sea. He said, now cast your net. Then Peter said, listen young man. We have worked here the entire night. We had nothing. I believe what gave Peter faith 
is because of what he saw Jesus doing when he was casting out demon healing people. He said, maybe he would not do something. Me. Listen, whatever situation Jesus is allowing you to go is going to work to your advantage. He will turn it to your advantage. Whatever things the Lord has allowed you to go through, maybe you think that it is nothing. Other people are getting blessed, but it's strengthening your own faith. He's helping your own life. I believe Peter saw because he was sitting in the boat. He saw when Jesus was praying, he was teaching people. We were casting demons. He said, wow, this guy's powerful. When he said, cast now your net, you know what he told him? I've worked the whole night. Jesus is aware of what you have already done. He's aware of all your mistakes. He's aware of all your failures. He knows that. But Peter said, on your word, because you have said something, now I'm going to cast it. Or I pray for somebody to cast your net. The word of the Lord. When the Lord says, cast your nut, cast your nut. You have been there, you put your CV, they never, they never done anything. Now the Lord say again, go put your CV again. You tried it, you failed. You see, your problem is, you think that yesterday is tomorrow. Yesterday is not tomorrow. Yesterday is yesterday. Can you please tell your neighbor, yesterday is yesterday. Yesterday is yesterday. If yesterday did not work, it doesn't mean that tomorrow is not going to work. If yesterday did not work, it doesn't mean that tomorrow is not going to work. Because tomorrow is different from yesterday. Tomorrow has other people. Tomorrow has other, other weather, other time, other favor. Don't be slave of your past. Do not be slave of your past. Mistake that happened in the past is in the past. The past is only something that you can learn from. There's nothing can do about the past. What I did as a mistake in the past is already done. I can't be crying for them day and night. I did this. I did this. Listen, you better stand up out of that mistake and go forward because tomorrow it will bring its own things. Oh, you know, the, 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 that man dumped me. He dumped you tomorrow. It's yesterday. It's not tomorrow. He did not dump you tomorrow. He dumped you yesterday. Hallelujah. There are people is in relationship is afraid. Hey, maybe they dumped me. No, listen, this is a new relationship. It has nothing to do with yesterday. If that person dumped you yesterday, this one is not going to dump you in the name of Jesus. As long as you know that what I'm doing, I'm doing what the Lord said I should do. Our problem, many things that we are doing is not what the Lord said us to do. Peter did not cast the nut by himself. He said, by your word, I will cast the nut. By your word, I will cast the nut. And he did so. You know what happened? The very same place where he did not catch any fish. But that time, because of the word of the Lord, I declare on somebody's life, uh, by the word of the Lord, uh, your fish must come. Uh, by the word of the Lord, uh, your fish must come. Those fish must come. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The Bible says he cast a nut and he caught a lot of fish. A lot of fish. You know what Peter says? He said, no, no, get out of my boat. You are too holy for me. You are too holy. I've never seen this before. You know, there are certain things God will do. You, you'll start singing all the time. You start smiling all the time. You start, people ask you what's going on. Say, I don't know. God has done it again. He has done it again. Yeah. Hallelujah. So you need to learn to fast, to allow God to do his thing first. Then he will take care of yours. Hallelujah. You need to fast. So because fasting is a time we're meeting with God, you cannot just go and meet God anyhow. If, you know, I remember, there's a, there's a place where I used to work. Now, every time they say the MEC will come, they will cut the, the herbs, they will clean the place will, because the MEC is coming. But on a normal time, dirtiness is with us. But because they know the MEC is coming, they will prepare the place. Because they know that the MEC, you don't meet him just like that. If the MEC, you cannot just meet him like that, do you think that you can meet God like that? If today, you and me, we are invited to go and see the president of this country, His Excellency Cyril Ramaphosa. You're not going to go that way. You'll make makeup. You'll go borrow things. 
just to try to appear because you are entering into the palace of the king. So here we have the king of kings. You can't just go anyhow. The Bible says in the book of Amos, chapter 4, verse 12. Amos chapter 4, verse 12. The Bible says that uh, you should prepare yourself to meet the king. So remember, we say fasting is what? It's a time you put aside where you humble yourself so that you can meet God. So it's a time of meeting with God. It's a time you're going to spend the time with God. So you need to prepare yourself. Prepare to meet your God. You must not just fast anyhow. You see, your problem, our problem was, we were just fasting anyhow. So if you fast anyhow, of course, you're not going to have a result. Now, how to prepare yourself? Or what should you do when you are going to fast? The first thing that you should do when you are going to fast, you must first know why you are fasting. Why? The reason of your fast, the objective, the aim, the target. It is important for you to target what you are fasting for. The objective of your fasting. If you don't, fast, you don't target your objective, of course, you are not going to be able to evaluate. Beloved. It is time for you to start praying with strategies. Don't just pray anyhow. Don't just fast anyhow. Fast with strategies. That I'm going to fast for this. So that if it happened, I know that my fast worked. Why are you fasting? No, I'm just fasting. This Wednesday is a fasting day. How will you know that that fast has impacted something? You need to set Objective. God is not against you setting objective. We know the greatest objective is first to know God. To see God. Now you need to set also your own objective. Now, come. Let's go to the Bible. I'm just going to go quickly and revise those people who fasted before us. You'll see none of them fasted just by fasting. Everyone have, has a aim. Moshe went for 40 days and 40 nights because he wanted the law. He wanted God to give him something. He wanted God to give him to give him his will. He wanted the will of God. So Moses did not spend 40 days and 40 nights just there. No. When he finished, the Bible said he went down with the tablet of the law. He got the tablet of the law. So when you, you are fasting, what are you looking for? What are your objectives? Every Wednesday you are fasting. What are you looking for? Queen Esther, when he fasted, the Bible said that there was a problem. What was the problem? They were supposed to be killed. So she fasted for that decree of them being killed to be changed. Go look for problems so that you can fast for them. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, the Bible says that Queen Esther, he told them, go fast. There was a problem. The problem was clear. Most of us, we are fasting. We don't know what we are fasting for. We are just fasting by fasting. No, I pray for you to not fast by fasting. Because if there is nothing, then don't fast. <laughs> just pray. Because you must have an aim while you are fasting. No, I'm just fasting. No, don't, don't, then don't call it fasting. Just say, I'm, 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 I'm abstaining from food so that I can slim. It's okay, we'll understand. Don't lie that it's fasting. Because fasting must have prayer. Fasting must have humbleness. Fasting must have a target. Hallelujah. The city of Nineveh, they fasted for repentance. You can fast to seek for repentance. They were looking, they were seeking repentance. They were repenting in their fast. Daniel was fasting for the, for the promises of God to come to pass in his time. Paul and the entire church of Antioch, they were fasting so that they may put aside Paul and Silas for the whatever mission God gave them. So they were fasting for a, a reason. From today, before you to start fasting, take your book. Don't feel ashamed. 
If is marriage right, marriage. Don't feel ashamed. I remember when we were young, not yet married, we had a lot of sisters who used to sing. There's a song we used to sing. Rabbi, what are you saying? For my, and then you put something for my, and then but now when they are singing, they say, Rabbi, what are you saying? When it's arrive, arrived that time, they say, for my, mm, 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 mm. He doesn't want to say, for my marriage. <laughs> There's nothing wrong to pray for marriage. Nothing wrong. You can pray. I mean, I just want you to pray for whatever you want. Hallelujah. Pray for things. Things are not happening because we don't pray for them. If they become tough, difficult, fast for them. Hallelujah. Remember, I told you fasting is a secret weapon. It's a great weapon. That you cannot just use anyhow. Use if you have tried all the strategies and they are not working. Go to fast. Hallelujah. The second thing that you should do when you are fasting, you must have terms and condition of fasting. Somebody say terms and condition. Even in the things of this world, there are terms and conditions. You cannot just fast anyhow. You must prepare yourself. Before you enter, you tell God, these are my terms and condition. In Esther chapter 4 verse 16, Esther put the terms and conditions. Esther chapter 4 verse 16. Give us Esther 4 16. She put the condition, the terms and condition of the fast. You see, many times our fast are not heard from heaven because our fast has no terms and conditions. We don't know what we should observe. Now listen here. Go gather together all the Jews who are in Susa. First thing. Who should fast? The Jews who are in Susa. Who should fast? The people in Burning Bush Bible Church. Two. He said, and fast for me. Terms and conditions. Do not eat and drink for three days. Day and night. And I and my attendant will fast. So, the first thing, he told them the place where we should pray. Two, he told them the length of fasting. If you say you are fasting for three days, let it not be transformed into one day and a half. Because you are so much hungry. You are like, ah, oh, God will understand. Hallelujah. You are breaking terms and conditions. If you think that's going to be one day, that I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging you to, to not start with long fast. It, the, long, the, the length of the fast is not what is needed. But it's all these things. The terms and conditions. If you say I'm going to fast from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., it doesn't matter. But if you respect that, that's what matters in front of God. I'm seeing people, they always like to impress us. Join us for 120 days of fasting and prayer. Brother. Huh. I've seen people in 121 days of fasting. This is where they do horrible things. So, terms and conditions. You say three days, let it be three days. You say one day, let it be one day. Don't be too spiritual. We said three days. You said, no, me, I'll go four days. You are breaking the terms and conditions. It's not because you are doing more that God will listen to you. You are breaking our agreement. The Bible says you cannot walk together if you don't agree. We say agreement is 14 days. You, because you are too much spiritual, too small, 21, you are breaking terms and conditions. Hallelujah. No, me, I prayed too much. Why, why 14 days? I will only do seven. Terms and condition. The length. Also, terms and condition in what will we be eating? There are people here when we say we are only going to eat vegetable, he start creating his own vegetable. Wings of chicken. Since when the wings of chickens are vegetable now? Hallelujah. Terms and you see, you see, small things were destroying our content of our fasting. How many people here when we say we should not drink? Look left, right. 
Beloved, that's why when we will fast, we will tell you our terms and condition so that we can come together. If we say we're not going to eat meat, it's our terms and condition. Then people will start, you know, the people give us already funny questions. We say no meat, and you go to, it's also chicken and meat. It's also, this a meat. So what do you want? I'm speaking about terms and condition. You must respect what you eat. If we say we are, we are only going to drink water, water, then people go, flavored water, is it water? If it was only water, they could have just said water. If they say flavored water, it means that they flavor that water. If you say juice, then let it be juice. If we say fruit, let it be fruit. Hallelujah. You see, beloved, sometimes we are creating problems ourselves because of these small and things. So this fasting, you and me, we're going to have terms and conditions. There is no pressure when you are setting your terms and conditions unless if God himself comes and tell you about the terms and conditions. Jesus did not fast 40 days and 40 nights because he wanted to. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights because God said he should go and fast 40 days and 40 nights. Hallelujah. Esther, God never said fast three days. Esther, he, she decided we're going to do it for three days and three nights. It was the, the, our own agreement. Daniel was pressed by the circumstances to fast for 21 days. Because he was not waiting, he giving answer. He prayed today, no answer. He continued, no answer. He continued, today, no answer. He continued, he could, until the 21 days, then he received answer. Now, I need to tell you this because it's important. You can set your length of fasting. And you say, I'm going to fast for 10 days. While you reach day five, God answered you and said, stop praying. I've answered you. Get out. It's possible. But, <laughs> but, you better make sure that the one who's telling you to go out, it is God. That it is not your own body, your own flesh, because you are tired. I remember the first day I did three days without drinking and, 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 and eating. Oh, the second day I thought I'm dying. You know that day I thought really I'm dying. I can see my spirit is threatening to leave my body. <laughs> Hallelujah. I remember we had a brother who was brushing his teeth even ten times during the day. He will take past, he brush the teeth because there's a bit of... But people are always having technique. He brushes his teeth so many times. Asking him, brother, why is it? I've got to brush my teeth? He was after that small. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, I'm telling you. But what is true, it is not easy. If you are having a long fast, it is advisable to be at the same place. Don't have three days fast and then you are running after taxi at the taxi rank. You can collapse. Because you need energy. Moses was 40 days, was there at the mountain. There. So usually long fast, go to the same place and do less movement so that you can keep your energy. You must also work smart. You are, you are fasting for long fasting and then you are, you know, doing heavy things, lifting. That's why in our fasting we'll ask God to help us so that those who are going to work, we should give them something that's going to sustain them when they will be at work. But it should be something that we agree upon. Don't go there and say, Pastor, you don't understand my job. Me, I must take two bananas and two this and two no. Let agree. Let agree so that you may be heard. Hallelujah. Now let me finish and then we'll continue next Sunday. Uh, is it time? Or is beyond? Okay. The, the third thing you should do during fasting, be holy and separate yourself with evil. Be holy and separate yourself with evil. You cannot fast and still you are not holy. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 3 to 4. 
This is happening to many people. It's the day of fasting, but he's insulting people. He's even promising them, you, you, I'm fasting. When I finish to fast, after fast, you'll see. I'll show you. Wait, I'm still fasting. When I'm done with fasting, you'll see. I mean, the Bible says, Isaiah 58, why have you fasted? We fasted, they say, and you have not seen it. Why have you humbled ourselves? You see, fasting is humbling ourselves. And you have not noticed. Yet on the day, now this is the reason why God did not answer. On the day of your fasting, you do as you please. And exploit all your workers. Give us the next scripture. Next one, verse 5. You see a day of fasting. You see what you're doing on a day of fasting. You are fast uh, in, the, in this kind of fast. Four. Thank you. I can see you are following. Thank you. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. Wicked fists are not only this fist. Wicked fists are also this fist. When you are insulting people during your fast, you are insulting your husband during the fast, you are insulting your wife during your fast, you are, fast, you are insulting your children. The day of fast must be a special day where your life must be different, where you are not doing this. The Bible says you must not do as you please. In other versions, they say you should not give yourself to your weakness. All the weakness are not seen necessarily, but the Bible says that we should not give yourself to the weakness. The weakness are those kind of things that you like to do. Championship. You know? They are soccer match today. You leave fasting, you go watch soccer match. You are watching. Those are your weaknesses. You must also say that I'm fasting today. I'm going to fast also with my eyes. Hallelujah. So the, the, the third thing as I said, be holy. You cannot be on your fasting, but you are sinning on your fasting. We will do 14 days. Don't sin for 14 days. Don't be sinning on that day. That day, you must not promise people that you will catch up with your anger. After fasting, you must insult people. You must not fight. You must not fight with your husband or with your wife. You know, marriage is, is having a lot of things, but still, it is a nice thing. You know, there are married people, sometimes when they are praying, they are accusing each other to God. He's praying here, Lord. I have people in this house. <laughs> oh God. They don't know you. Yet two of you are in that house. You and your wife. Who doesn't know God? <laughs> the Bible says. If you want to offer something to God. And dare you remember. That you have something with your brother. The Bible is very prudent. He said if you brought your offering. You know you brought your offering. You know. This is my offering. You want to give. And then you remember, mm, I have something with God. The Bible doesn't say, put back it in the pocket. And the Bible is very prudent. He said, put it in there. Because you don't know if you go, if you're going to come back. What if you die there? <laughs> Leave it there. <laughs> the Bible, you know, I like the Bible. The Bible is so prudent. It said, Leave it there. Because when you go, we don't know if you come back. Leave it there. Go and fix. When you finish to fix, then come back. Offer another one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Stop this kind of prayer when you are praying. I used to pray like that. When I fight with my wife, I'll accuse her to God. And I'm praying so that I can listen. That I'm going to accuse her to God. <laughs> you see, the good thing with God, God cannot be impressed by your words. You know? God, send him fire, send him fire. You see, God, God is, is just going to send just fire like that. You are the one who did the problem. Who to, to send just fire like that. No, no fire. Fire, 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 fire. God said, no fire. Fire to yourself. Arrange things. Hallelujah. Be holy. Listen to this. Holiness amplifies your voice in heaven. 
Holiness does what? Amplifies your voice to heaven. So if you, um, if you are holy, when you are praying, your voice will be heard. Because there's nothing that's going to stop your voice. But if you have dirtiness, that's why before you, you go to pray, we'll learn it. Another point we're going to learn is going to be forgiveness. You can't enter into fasting when you have, we'll talk about it. But now, let's speak about holiness. To be holy is to be separated, to be put aside. That is being holy. Be put aside, away of all those things. That's why when you, are, when you are about to enter into fasting, you need to separate yourself in certain things. And the fourth thing is, you must not give yourself to your weakness. Your weakness are not only sin. Your weakness are things that you like, that you cannot resist. There are brother here, he can run away from church if it's Champions League. I'm telling you. You'll see World Cup will be coming. There are people will be running away from church because of the World Cup. I have my nephew who like soccer. You know, even when he's tired, if there is a, a new match, he will watch. There are people here, he will watch uh, that ch channel, what is the name? Um, Telemundo. He was, he's cooking like this. He's cooking, but he's watching Telemundo. Everything he doesn't see, he knows where it's. <laughs> but he's in Telemundo. Those are your weaknesses. It's not sin, but that day of fasting, you say, I'm not going to do that. You see? And there are weaknesses which are wickedness. You must also refrain from those things. So, when you are fasting, your weakness you must understand. I'm not going to watch movies. I'm not going to go and do this. I'm not going to go where I used to go and talk with certain friends. Go away from those friends. Because the devil knows he will do all his best to make you sin during your fast. If you never realize when you are fasting, it is then temptation become too much. You can see prov people are provoking you at work. You can see they start provoking you. You are like, oh my God. If I was not fasting. <laughs> you know, there are people, he come and talk to you, talk to you, talk to you. Then you say, if it was not because of fast. The answer I could have given you, fasting. Just let it go. You see, the good thing when you fast more, that attitude that you adopt during fasting will become your nature. That's what makes you now to become a holy man. Hallelujah. So what, before you to fast, prepare yourself in holiness. Remove sin, confess them. Whatever you do, confess the bad sin, confess, you know, confess, confess, purify yourself, sanctify yourself, make yourself holy, and then you enter. Your weaknesses decide that, okay, my weaknesses I use every evening. I used to call uh, this one and then we will talk about other people. Decide that now I'm not going to call anyone. During fasting, you must reduce the number of people you have to talk to. Because the more you talk, the Bible says, the mouth that talks much will never lack sinning. When you talk too much, I always say out of this pulpit, until you say, we're not going to know how stupid you are. You can have a nice tie, suit, will respect you. When you just open your mouth and you, you start uttering things which are not, all of us will like, ooh, how stupid is this guy? With his big suit, how can he be stupid like that? But if you kept quiet, who wouldn't know? Who will continue to respect you? So please, when you are fasting, refrain yourself from talking. The Bible says, let your word be few. Don't talk. You don't need to talk on the time, all the time. You don't need to talk in every conversation. You don't need to talk in every conversation. Sometimes in certain conversation, if you have nothing to say, keep quiet. Hallelujah. Let's rise up on our feet so that we can pray. God to help us in our fasting. Hallelujah. <laughs> Beloved, we are going to fast at the end of this month. And Wednesday we are fasting. I want you already to set 
your goals for this Wednesday. You can fast because you want to get rid of a certain behavior. You can fast because you want to change your character. Because if you have a bad character, people are always complaining about you. Why are you always like that? Why are you always like that? It means that your character is not good. You can say, Lord, this coming Wednesday, I'm going to pray for my character. My aim is you to impact, to change my character. You can pray for something else. This Wednesday, I want to pray for the fasting period, for it to be powerful. I want to pray for money. I want to pray for children. Whatsoever, brother. But you need also to wake on your holiness. The Bible says we know that God does not listen to the prayer of the sinners. The only prayer God receives from the sinners is the prayer of repentance. The rest of the prayer God does not receive it. So if you live in sin, God will not gonna listen to you. And you need to get rid of your weaknesses. When you are fasting that this coming Wednesday, let it be a special time where you put yourself aside, where you decide that I'm not gonna talk to anybody. I'm not going to go. You used to do 10 calls in a day. Reduce it to one or two. Important one. Speak to God. Now let's pray together. Say, Lord Jesus, I messed up my times of fasting. I did not fast according to your will. I did not fast according to your will. But from today, from this message, I want to change my ways. I want to adapt myself to your will. I want to adapt myself to your will. I want to fast according to your word so that my prayer may be heard from you I'm starting this next Wednesday help me Lord hear my cry let me see the results in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name do you believe that the Lord has heard your voice Jesus a round of applause